I believe in the government of kindness. I believe in truth, in investigation, in free thought. I do not believe that the hand of want will be forever extended in the world. I do not believe that the prison will forever scar the ground. I do not believe that the shadow of the gallows will forever curse the earth. I do not believe that it will always be true that the men and women who work the hardest have the least to eat or the least to wear. I do believe that the day will come when liberty, morality, and justice, like the rings of Saturn, will surround the earth that the world will be better, and every true man and woman and every free man and woman will do what they can to hasten the coming of the religion of human advancement. We have already compared the benefits of theology and science. When the theologian governed, the world was full of huts and hovels for the many, palaces and cathedrals for the few. To nearly all the children of man, reading and writing were unknown arts. The poor were clad in rags and skins. They devoured crusts and gnawed bone. The day of science dawned. And the luxuries of a century ago are the necessities of today. Men and women in the middle ranks of life have more of the conveniences and elegancies than the kings and princes of the theological times. And above and over this, is the development of mind. There is more of value in the brain of the average man or woman of today, of the master mechanic, of the chemist, of the inventor, of the naturalist, than there was in the brains of the world 400 years ago. These blessings did not fall from the sky. They did not drop from the outstretched hands of priests. They were not found in cathedrals or behind altars, nor were they searched for with holy candle. They were not found with the closed eyes of prayer, nor were they in answer to superstitious supplication. These are the blessings of freedom, the benefits of reason, observation, and experience. And for them all, man is indebted to man. It is contended by many that ours is a Christian government founded upon the Bible, and all who find that book to be false or foolish are rejecting the foundations of our country. The truth is, our government is not Christian. It did not fall from the sky. It is not the result of divine inspiration. It is the mother of invention, of free thought, of applied knowledge, that is to say, of science. Superstition has done enough harm already. Religion suspects anything that is pleasant, anything that is joyous, and they often have the idea that God feels best when we feel worst. They have stoned to death the joy of nature with the cold rock of ignorance and fear. Church and state are two vultures that have fed at the heart of chained Prometheus. I say, let the human race have a chance. Let every man and woman think for themselves and express that thought. There is no wrath in the serene heavens. There is no scowl in the blue of the sky. Upon the throne of the universe, tyranny does not sit as king. That is my doctrine. And I will do what I can while I live to increase in the, in the American people that sense of personhood and independence. Our civilization is not Christian. It did not fall from the sky. It is not the result of divine inspiration. It is the mother of invention. When the human race becomes great and grand enough to admit that all have equal rights, when thought is untrammeled, when worship means the doing of useful things and religion means the discharge of obligation to one's fellow man, then, and only then, will the world be civilized. Thank you.